います。Daikoku Parking Area, a famous racing spot of the Wangan Freeway Racers. It is here that you will often find a racing team of NSXs built for the circuit and raced on both the track and the street. Their name? Top N. We're invited for a day of Wangan with Top N by our good friend Yanachan. Although these cars mean business, these guys are absolutely crazy. And how can you not have fun with guys who race over 180 miles an hour? Let's go out on the Wanga. We headed out on the Wanga Expressway and played a little game of tag. 11 highly modified NSXs. Top End has become a famous and highly respected race crew in Japan. The crew boasts a membership of 25 street and circuit spec NSXs that are often featured in various Japanese magazines and videos. Trey from Velocity got grip an exclusive interview with the leader of Top End. Top end. Two, yeah. Two years. Horsepower, average. I base uh, 300 to K. Yeah. 310 PS each car. Over 300. Over 300. Over 300 horsepower. <laughs> Whose car is fastest? Mm. Ah, no. Oh, oh, yeah. This one? Mm. Not this one? No, no. This no. one? <laughs> no. Tune up. フルチューン。フルチューン。フルチューン。フルチューン。フルチューン。フルチューン。フルチューン。フルチューン。フルチューン。フルチューン。フルチューン。フルチューン。フルチューン。フルチューン。フルチューン。フルチューン。フルチュー
6 in San Francisco. Put on by Moto P of Club 4AG, it is here that you will find famous American drifters like Benson Sue, Andy Yen, Alex Pfeiffer, Ken Gushi, and Signal Auto's Fumiaki Komatsu. Grip video met with Ernie Fixmore from Team Rotora. One of the drivers picked by Drift King, Keiichi Tsuchiya, to be one of the participants in the first D1 Grand Prix professional drift event in the U.S. Ernie shared with us his thoughts on drifting in America and being a part of D1. I was in Japan for about three years. I didn't actually start drifting until about six months after I got there. So it was probably like January of 2000. I started noticing in the evenings when we got off work that a couple guys in the parking lot started changing their tires out and tweaking on their cars a little bit. So I started walking over there and asking them, what's up, what are they doing? They said, we're going to go out to play. And I'm like, oh, what's this? And I ended up going to Nago Circuit and practicing a lot. And from there it went. The drifting level here has gone up quite a bit. It's going to be hard for, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's going to be hard for everybody to keep to Japan's level because a lot of the drifters come from off the streets. And there's a stress level on the streets that you cannot maintain here with cones and things like that. You can't maintain the stress level. Even for me, it's hard for me to maintain that stress level because I can't play like I did in Japan. It's impressive. I mean, he has a lot of angles. He reminds me of the videos I watch of Japan. It's kind of funny they put me as Ernie Gung-Ho Fixman in the magazine. And a lot of people, I guess they say that's my style. I don't, I didn't think I had a style, but now I'm starting to see, I guess, that everybody says I go out there and do what I have to do. Trials. Because anything can happen when you're out drifting. About split-second reactions. So you got to be really, really consistent in D1 from what I've seen. I just got signed with Rotora for about until next December. There's talk with Naoki and, and, and Moto that we're gonna be putting on some shows nationwide. Rotora is signing the contract, they're gonna take care of me for that. It's awesome. <laughs> it's a dream come true, really. And I hope I hope it continues. I hope it's not just for this August and hopefully I can make something of it. Just left Ronzo's house, and uh, we're heading out to meet up with Trey, another Velocity guy. We're gonna do some tailgate, or at least we're gonna go check it out. That's our days, we've got somewhat warm days, 15 degrees, 14 degrees. Let's see, uh, <clears throat> see if the, the ice has melted up there yet. Let's see if we can do some toge. What's going on, Randy? How slippery it was. Mike was just testing the road to see how slippery it was. And we had some slip spots, slippery spots coming up. And the tail end was getting a little wild. So, and we might be okay tonight. If we can find a halfway decent place, then we can, we can have some fun. This is what we're gonna go drifting in. That's what we're gonna go drifting in. In the ice, below freezing, Kobu Pass.
Last time he did that, it spun out right there. That's how I wrecked. Oh, yeah. He spun out and then I clutch kick coming up. drift on the street kids. <laughs> I've been getting really lucky. I've scraped, scraped the front end a little bit every once in a while. So anyways how it happened was we were drifting through the S's and you transverse through the S's it's a left and then a right and a quick left and then you gotta set the car and go into the hairpin right. The hairpin right is really tricky because if the road is crested real well, like a lot in the middle. So the front wheels, you, you got to keep them on the right side of the road, the oncoming lane of traffic. And that pulls you around the turn. And if you go a little bit, if you get the front end to get up over the crest, the whole car will slide over. So then when it's snowy and icy like this, and you can see all the ice all over the ground, it doesn't help. You, know, you don't have any room for air. And it's kind of stupid to do it anyway, but you know we're stupid, so we do it. <laughs> It's fun. It's fun. Did you see him? Do it again. What? what? Keep going. No. Are you sure? Positive. <laughs> We're dorks. We're straight dorks. Go for it. Ready? Yeah. This is DJ Electric. DJ Electric. Woo! Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you to keep doing it like this. Tranced the car. Yeah. We out tranced the car, dude. The clock is out. The fucking stereo is not. We actually out tranced the car. The amp is out. <laughs> That's funny, That's dude. Oh, the fucking dash, The lights don't work either. Welcome to Border Racing, one of the most legendary racing companies in Tokyo, Japan. Owner Satomo Sashiyama started out as a famous street racer in his prefecture. Now he builds and tunes cars for both grip and drift racing. Border's popular line of body kits for Nissans, Toyotas, and Mazdas are designed by Sashiyama-san himself, as are the Border exhaust systems, suspension systems, turbo kits, and engine performance upgrades. 
the FRP hood from Border has garnered quite a bit of attention for its design. As opposed to the normal sandwiching of two fiberglass pieces, which decreases the durability of the hood and creates rough edges, having the outer layer curve over the edge creates strength and allows for better fitment and a smoother finish. It's designed exact to fit how it is instead of normal FRP sandwiched together like this where you gotta cut. When you, when you open them all the time, they get loose and they lose shape. Or when you, if you ever fitted arrow parts, you know, you like the bumpers, you have to stay in the corners. But the way you designed it, it's strong and it never changes its shape. So it's, it's, it lasts forever. Two of Border's most popular cars are Border's FD3 SRX7 and the Z32 Fairlady Z. The prototype wide body RX7 is outfitted with. Fairladies have always been a popular sports car in Japan. Border has built this fully tuned Z32 with the following components.
Alex from GRIP and Brandon from HKS USA explain the basics of springs, coilovers, and suspension systems. With the progressive rate spring, it actually has a couple different rates in there. During normal driving street conditions and you hit a little bump, it doesn't jar the vehicle, it doesn't throw it off track. And when more weight is applied to progressive rate spring, it actually gets stiffer. For example, if you're in a corner, your, your body's leaning, the more weight that are, that's applied to the spring itself is actually getting stiffer. So that's the difference between a linear rate and a progressive rate. They use progressive rate springs for uh, most race applications only because it's, it use, utilizes the same rate all the way throughout. That way they can professionally corner weight the vehicle specifically for the track and the conditions what they're, that they're looking for. Well, the spring is designed specifically for the application and for the drop height that they design it at. When you cut or you heat a spring, it actually throws the rate completely off. Whether you measure it or not, it's going to not be consistent all the way through. And each four corners are going to be, you know, completely way off. It's going to be detrimental to your, your shock, which is going to cause to premature wear, not having the tire contact patch that you're looking for you know, stuff like that. Each spring is individually load tested prior to shipping out and boxing, so all the products are manufactured, designed, engineered, r and in-house in HKS Japan. The quality control is bar none. Going with the mated threaded body shock and tuned spring in conjunction as one unit gives a much better ride and feel. People go with coilover suspension due to the height adjustment, the dampening adjustment, and you can basically set up your car for street or track. The Hypermax Snapper is a full true coilover system. It's made from high quality chrome moly, which is very durable. It uses a linear rate spring. This is actually a progressive wound. Most come with an aluminum uh, pillow ball upper mount. Some are actually camber adjustable, which you can adjust the camber on uh, certain McPherson type struts. It's a single monotube design. It's oil and gas filled. Now it comes with a short stroke damper, so when you lower the vehicle, it actually doesn't take away from the stroke of the shock itself. Spring and shock are made it together to be one working piece. Nambu actually. It's about midnight right now. We're gonna do some street drags. Guys are clearing away the uh, obstacles over here to, uh, to the drag and I'm really shaky because I'm really fucking cold. States. Tonight, grips at a very classic spot for street racing in Yokohama with the Velocity Racing Team, Redline, and other crews. As you can see here, most of what you'll find is rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. Front wheel drive cars are rarely seen at Zero. We used to race here. Yeah, a couple years ago. One of the best places we used to race. Yeah. You said just with the barricade right now, so we yeah. start racing.
chased out by the cops. Everyone ran and regrouped at another location. Taking the dark roads. In Japan, the cops are a little more lenient than they are in the U.S. Usually they'll just show up, turn on their lights, and wait for everyone to leave. Not everyone made it back without being caught. He had his license plate up so the cops can see that number. That's if they go in Japan, so probably going to get some tickets. Cops are smart, dude. Maybe not. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes the older, the older guys, sometimes they're cool. They're cool. Yeah. Oh, they just got a warning. This is what not to do with your license plates on your car. <laughs> Look what the fuck is that? Yeah, dude. She got the ratchet. See, what you do is they get that so they push it back so when you're driving on the highway. Yeah, the. the yeah, cameras, they won't see it. Like if they see it like this, they'll bounce right off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is Kengushi. I am a high school student. I go to Gavrilino High School and I drive an S13. Ken Gushi is looked upon as one of the new up-and-coming drifters in the American D1. What's even more surprising is that he's only 16. I learned about drifting from Video Option, the Option magazine. Your video, Fast and the Furious, just kidding. <laughs> After school, then go home, he always think about the drifting, driving car. I started driving when I was nine years old. At 13 years old, my dad took me to the canyons with his Corolla. The car at the dirt, you know, start drifting at the car self, you know. But the accident, the car like starts shaking. So I tell him to do the how to control the car. I don't teach nothing, just the, whatever the slide in the car, the control. The hand brake, e brake drifting, and uh, the, the clutch drifting, and all kind of drifting and style. So he jumped in the car, and he never stopped driving until I'm stopping. My first track event was the November of 2001. And that's where I first ran my SR20. But then the bad thing was my dad forgot to put transmission oil inside the transmission and I ran the car without oil. And on the way back home, the transmission burned and then it was stuck in traffic. They don't believe me when I say I'm 16. And I don't know, I don't think they believe that I don't have a license either. My goal was to be in D1, but now that I am running in D1, to do good, win, first place. I'm very proud. You know, I, that's uh, actually that's my dream. You know, so actually his dream, but the, my dream also. I'm not really nervous. I am nervous, but not that nervous yet. Until like the last week before D1, then I'll be nervous. I want to see more girls drifting. I'm waiting for like the first D1 girl. I don't think it's going to be where Japan is at right now, where their level is just far beyond our level. So I think it'll be similar to Japan's like, D1, but I think the United States is going to have their own style, I think, their own style of D1.
Can you hear me now? Hi, my name is Joe Galante from Seattle, Washington. I'm the owner of the 1994 Toyota Super Turbo you see here. I belong to Team MoSpeed, which is a club that's based out of the Seattle area. I also work for a company called Ritech Motorsports for the creation of project vehicles as seen here. I ditched out on the 93 Civic Si, which just wasn't quite fast enough. Uh, I saw the winged beast from the east, which we refer to as the Supra, and thought it'd be kind of a cool car to just drive around in and have some good times with. Uh, and then I picked up a turbo magazine and a couple other magazines and realized that, oh my gosh, you can put stuff on these things to go faster. Uh, and it's just been kind of an addiction since then. Two Jay-Z? No shit. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah, back. Thanks, I appreciate it. It's Joe, it's this guy right here. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, how's that? How's that? Yeah, pretty oh, good. <laughs> yeah, the Toyota Super sports the uh, 2JZ, no shit, GTE engine, which is the uh, inline six turbo. Uh, we modified the uh, stock twin turbos to a Gretti T78 single turbo upgrade. The cylinder head has been ported and polished. The intercooler is done by Gretti as well. It's a four row intercooler. It's got HKS, 272 cams, and running AEM cam gears. The entire car is controlled by the AEM EMS engine management system, which is just a fabulous piece to work with. The boost is controlled by a Gretti Profect B. It dynoed at 683 re rear wheel horsepower and R&D dyno uh, at 26 pounds of boost. The exterior of the car is a complete custom wide body kit. It's all handcrafted out of sheet metal. It's two and a half inches wider in the front and three and a half inches wider in the rear. It has wheel side side skirts and rear skirts which have been molded into the rear bumper and sides. Uh, the front bumper is a factory OEM bumper with a Bowman molded lower lip. The wing on the rear is done by C West. It's a full carbon fiber wing and it's got the JGTC style side mirrors which uh, just kind of accent everything from the rear forward. Running the HKS hyper damper coilovers. All brakes are done by StopTech. They really fill out the HRE wheels. All the interior accents and goodies have been generously uh, worked with from uh, Sparco. Um, a set of the uh, Sparco pedals which is matched with the steering wheel and the shift knob etc. All interior panels have been recovered. The uh, Targa has been uh, refinished in suede along with the shift boots and uh, custom stitching in the doors. Uh, the roll cage was built by Art Morrison. It's a custom four point bolt in roll cage that I designed and we had the uh, NX nitrous bottles uh, custom mounted to the back of it. We're running Gretti 60 millimeter gauges. Uh, yeah, all sorts of fun stuff. Other than that, you know, it's got your, your regular standard laundry list of super modifications, fabulous car to work with. Uh, everybody who has them loves them and then they trade them in for Skylines. <laughs> Welcome to Shaw Pasahi. Home of sexy style body kits created by Ken and Nui, and home of Sexy Nights Drifting Team. Just about every part you could ever want for your drift car and more are available here. <laughs> sexy Nights! <laughs> Led by a D1 competitor, Satoshi Suzuki, the Sexy Knights are famous for drifting in the industrial areas in Chiba, as well as competing at various drifting events and competitions. 
Group Video hooked up with Sexy Knights and several of their friends' teams, including Excite, Noisemaker, Tech Arts, Excellent Works, and Society. One car really caught our eye, the Tech Art Skyline GTS. First thing you'll notice upon opening the hood is the V-configured intercooler radiator setup. By placing the intercooler above the radiator, heat is dissipated more easily as the intercooler is not blocking the radiator. The car's engine is not made to produce high horsepower, but to be well balanced and have a large amount of torque. This is important in drifting, where instant response is very important. The car is also stripped to make the car as light as possible. Drifters in Japan set up their daily drivers for full race, taking their sport very seriously and always to the extreme. broken tie rod sent the Tech Arts Levin into the curb. The teams got together to help push the car into a side street before the cops could arrive. This unfortunately ended this night of street drifting, but you can be sure to see more of the Sexy Knights, Excite, Tech Arts, Noisemaker, Excellent Works, and Society later in future group videos. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Ronzo from Society Drift Team shares with us his feelings on the evening. It's a, it's a perfect day. If you could go home and... If I could go home and fuck some pussy, break my dick off on that shit, dude, just go to sleep, is is a perfect nine, dude. Who who needs to die and go to heaven when you're living it already? It's the shit. Hey, does he want to race? Does he want to race? Group video went to the 2003 IDRC Toyota Aloha Nationals to spend a day with Venom Crew in their infamous Toyota Supra. 
Venom is famous for their fuel management products, nitrous systems, cam gears, and other products. The Venom race team has several cars in their stable, and one of their most popular cars is their Toyota Supra. The Venom Supra runs two very large turbines in nitrous. Huge tires keep this snake on the pavement, and the parachute rigged on the rear of the car provides stopping power for a car that produces 1,498 horsepower at 996 foot-pounds of torque. The Supra runs on ethanol fuel, otherwise known as alcohol. Jimmy personally likes to inspect the fuel mixture himself. Listen here, okay? When you like Jack Daniels, you're going to get fucked up. The past few events, we've been running mid-7s, uh, close to about 185 miles an hour in a quarter mile. Right now, today, we've, uh, we're just trying to back the power out of the car and uh, get it to leave straight out of the hole. i um, been told by several dahuis and the locals here that, uh, that um, basically, you know, nobody gets out of this track straight from what I understand. So we're just trying to turn the power down as much as we can without sacrificing the vehicle. And um, I'll just go out there and give you guys a show. Jimmy prepares to make his first pass of the day. Just remember your usual deal, but you got it under control. Cool. Show me your levers. Okay. Oh. Show me your levers. Boom, boom, got boom. It. The tires are warmed up. Now it's time for the first pass. Jimmy seemed to have some problems on the first run. Let's look at it again. I had a really hard time differentiating where the, where the actual groove was and in the dry cement. I couldn't even tell, dude. I just, that's why, if you guys, after I got real loose and then I, try, I got it kind of straightened out, you notice I didn't get back on it right away. And that's because I wanted to make sure that I was straight. And then once I, re, I saw that white dashed line in the, I saw that white dashed line in the center of the groove and I'm like, okay, I'm there. <laughs> How you feeling, Jimmy? Thanks, Bruce. You got a little tired. Um, you know, even though you try not to think about time changing that your body does, I mean, fucking six, sorry, <laughs> six, seven o'clock comes along, you know, it's like eight, nine, ten at home, you know, and like, I'm usually in bed by nine, thirty, ten. That's I'm working on the website. Venom tows the Supra back into the pit to prepare it for the runs of the night. Unfortunately, Venom and the track had a disagreement which led to Venom packing up for the night. But you can bet that you'll see more of Venom in future grip videos. Canada, one of our first places to visit was one of Richmond's most popular tuners, Garage 5. Hi, my name is Wayne, part owner of Garage 5 Performance Tuning in Richmond, British Columbia. My partner's here with me, Richard Tam, Robert Tam, and David Yu. So why is it Garage 5 then instead of Garage 4? Because 5 represents speed. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> That's in Chinese, Chinese, man. Oh. Five. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm filming, dude. <laughs> what's, what's five in Chinese? Five. Is it fast? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so why isn't it garage five? Say fast in Chinese. It's five. Oh, five. Oh, five. Oh, so, so, so. Oh, five. so actually, you guys spelled it wrong. No. <laughs> it's supposed to mean like speed garage. Oh. Ah. Uh, garage five actually started as a team, a car club called Stage Five. Eventually, we, we had enough members and we said, hey, let's start up a business. And what better name to call it than to call it Garage 5. Half the name off our team and half a new name, so Garage 5. We started off treating all the Hondas and Acuras, all aspects, not just looks or performance. We help customers out with a little bit of everything, do a lot of engine swaps for customers. And recently, we've been doing a lot of fun data tuning, a white band tuning on the street and on the dyno. done all that we can do with Hondas. Obviously we still help customers with Hondas, but we're trying to gear toward other vehicles and makes. For instance, Nissan is upcoming big name for cars, as well as some of the other brands like Mazda's got some pretty new cars, and we'd like to work on those as well. Instead of just concentrating on Hondas, I mean, not everybody drives Hondas, right? Hello, I'm Klaus Ettensberger, President and CEO of CEC, Klaus Ettensberger Corporation. Here we are at our showroom in West Los Angeles, Beverly Hills, where we are catering to the uh, rich and famous, so to say. Uh, we are importing high-end automotive uh, products from Europe, mainly Germany and Italy, including uh, um, aftermarket accessories, spoiler kits, um, suspension components, exhaust systems, big uh, wheels, anywhere from 15 to 24 inches. This car right here, our 996 Turbo, is uh, one of our prized cars. We have a uh, TechArt front bumper, Type 2, has uh, brake cooling air ducts built into it. We have side skirts, we have uh, grill intakes on the side, rear spoiler in the rear, and uh, the rear bumper. The rear wing on this is actually a complete rear deck lid. It replaces the whole engine trunk lid and has a rear wing that is adjustable manually. It no longer uh, goes up and down with the um, mechanical, but you can adjust it right here with the Allen screws to get your different kinds of uh, downforce depending on what kind of tracks or what, what kind of uh, running you're doing with the car. The rear bumper is also a tech art piece and it's a complete replacement rear bumper from the tail light on down and it's cut out for the tech art exhaust system. TechArt and all the uh, tuners that we carry here in the States, wind tunnel test their products and are actually functional pieces that increase uh, downforce at top speeds. So and you might not get a lot of uh, top speed runs out here, but in Germany it's quite common. Under the hood, it's a Tiptronic transmission, so we can only bump it up a stage one, which is uh, the reprogrammed ECU and the air filter system, along with the uh, high performance exhaust and sport catalytic converters. The TechArt exhaust system is from the catalytic converter back and it features the GT2 Sport Cats, 100 cell Sport Cats, all the way to the tailpipes. The tailpipes have the, uh, the TechArt design of two tailpipes into one, and this is the black chrome version. It's also offered in a full polished chrome. So we go from 410 horsepower to 470 horsepower with just the stage one. There's also stage two, three, and four that take it up to 700 horsepower rear wheel drive at that point. It makes it for a perfect daily driver, as well as being able to take it out to the track and uh, take some high-speed runs to Las Vegas, Palm Springs, wherever you need to go in, in a hurry. This one has one of the first brake kits available from Brembo of their uh, new Gran Turismo brake systems. It's an eight-piston brake caliper with a 15-inch uh, rotor, cross road rotor, and four-piston in the rear. Because of the brake brakes, you have to run 19-inch wheels, and it's a 19, eight and a half, 1911 in the rear. We're running Continental Sport Contact 2s. The rear tire right here, 315 2519, the only tire approved worldwide made by Continental Michelin tires. 
Um, the contact package is huge. The car grips amazingly. It's all wheel drive, so you can really just throw this car around and it handles like a go-kart. CEC is, is bringing the world of tuning to the States here in Los Angeles at our showroom. And at the end of this year, we'll be opening up our second showroom in Coral Gables, Miami Beach, Florida. And we hope to bring a lot more of these cars to the East Coast. down here at Orwell Speedway again, one of our favorite drifting spots. Mainstream Productions handled the car show side of it. Club 4AG handled the drifting side of it. RSL had their Supra out here and their 350ZX, both of which they just had their products on the car. So it's pretty amazing to see what they can do with just their bolt-on product. Manabu Orino, he is uh, one of the judges from uh, D1 Professional Drifting League in Japan. He is also driving a GT500 Toyota Supra and uh, he is a professional racing driver. How is uh, your car running today? How is your car running today? He's driving us RSR 350Z. Uh, he's a, uh, the motor is stuck, so he doesn't feel uh, much power, but the uh, RSR suspension is working really good. Millen, owner and operator of RMR Products Incorporated. Um, we're here today demonstrating the um, Rally Car Evolution 7 and uh, promoting the full line of Evolution 8 performance products that my company manufactures. Drifting in the US obviously is new to the masses, the hardcore. Um, have been watching it, viewing it for several years now from Japan. Um, I, I think it definitely has a place and a namesake that will, that will grow for the future in the US.
Hey, my name is Ernie Fixmer. My name is Andy Yen, 23 years old. And I live in California. Hi, I'm Alex. You guys seen me. Good video. I took the first top 10 and I was pretty happy about that. Tried to concentrate on, on the drifting and not really on what's going on around. And that's, that got me into third place. I'm pretty satisfied with that. The event was great. I didn't even know I made the, the top three cut. When we get everybody driving together, it's the best. In this car, she's a beast. You don't want to drive this car. It's scary. The U.S. Drifters, I, I got to give it to Ernie and Andy and, and a lot of the other guys. Hero Taka, uh, they are the, the speeds they're hitting now. It's really hard to keep up with these guys. The original RSR from Japan is back in the USA with many exciting products. RSR exhaust systems omit useless bends to provide the straightest exhaust piping possible. RSR has the exhaust you need from quiet tone to full race sound and performance and fitting many applications. Please contact an authorized RSR dealer near you. RSR. Expect only the best.